We just got our wreck of a sailboat moving, and with the scenarios and the conditions that we experience out on these rambunctious waters, we thought that it would be a good opportunity to convey some practical sailing knowledge from our daily happenings here on the boat. Good morning from the Riviera Maya. The wind is coming a little bit unexpectedly from the south this morning, but we think we can still sail the rest of the way. Ready to go. Captain in the cockpit. Tiller is free. We don't like to use our engine so much because it's a loud, dysfunctional monstrosity of an engine. So we usually, in these kind of circumstances, when we don't have a lot of traffic around us and we have the room, we can usually sail off the anchor. We each have our roll. Robbie is going to pull out the mainsail and I'm gonna pull up the anchor. So we're gonna have the mainsail out before the anchor is up. If you're alone, you would probably throw out the mainsail first, have it out. It's already going to get the boat kind of sailing while it's at anchor. The boat's not going to be able to go much of anywhere. It's going to kind of just uh, fishtail around, maybe move forward on the anchor chain. That will help you to bring the anchor chain up in most instances. But in this case, because there's two of us, we're not going to risk that kind of complication. Robbie's going to roll out the main sail as I pull up the anchor. So as soon as you done uh, pull up the anchor, I need you to pull up the, the, the jib as fast as possible because we are drifting onto the reef. So Okay, so there is a reef behind us. With, with that in mind that there's a reef behind us, we're going to try and get the boat moving with as much speed as possible. Do you have anything to say about if something goes wrong? Yeah, drop the anchor down again or, st or let's get the engine started. That's plan B. <laughs> okay, so plan B is and or or, or or both things? Which one? I would go for both. I would try and get my engine started and I would drop the anchor. So we're talking about plan B's. If anything goes wrong or unexpected, we have two options. We can drop the anchor immediately again and we can also turn on the engine. Today we're heading to a destination that is directly upwind. Not only do we care about getting from point A to point B, but we also want to remain at a certain depth, remaining on the drop-off for fishing purposes. You might remember last video I mentioned sails being like airplane wings, creating lift with fast moving air on the outer edge and slower moving air on the inside edge, as well as a quick reference to the different points of sail, which are some of the possible sail positions depending on the direction of the wind. Well, today we're going to be sailing as close as possible to the wind, a close haul, in order to follow the rum line that points directly into the wind and along the drop off. Of course, our sailboat cannot sail directly into the wind, so we will need to tack or turn starboard and port back and forth until we get to our destination. Let's see if you can sail in a bit more if it holds. Well, I can feel she's uh, starting to luff right here. Like, if I go 210 degrees, she luffs. Also from the last video, you might remember terminology for parts of the sail and the luff of the sail will start to luff or ruffle or ripple when I'm heading too much into the wind, which is the beginning of a stall, stopping the boat or putting it in irons. 210, just by sheeting in the sails a little more. So we try to adjust the sails to be as tight in as possible for this upwind situation. We traveled out towards the open, deeper water as much as we'd like to already, so time to tack. With two people, controlling the tiller and the sails is very quick and easy. I release the port side jib sheet while Robbie pushes the tiller and sheets in the starboard side. We 
We make our way towards the shoreline until it becomes shallow enough for fishing purposes, and then time to tack back. The tiller goes to the starboard side for a starboard tack, and I shoot in the jib this time. While underway in calm seas, I always like to take the time to inspect standing and running rigging, starting at the bow, the forestay, baby stay, and shrouds, looking to see if anything is more tight or more loose than usual. From the base of the mast all the way up, looking at the shape, and finally the backstay. We arrived near the entrance to the harbor, so now it's time to reduce and lower sails. It's best to reduce sail by heading straight into the wind and luffing the sails. Still fishing, of course, Robbie wanted to try jigging from the boat, engine in reverse against the wind and the strong current, essentially stopping us in one place for dropping his jig into the water. And on the first drop... Now entering the harbor, on our right, a red light as we return to harbor. Red, right, returning. We're coming into the Community Sailing Club dock today to participate in this month's sailing regatta. We came in at a steeper angle than we liked, but no problem. It just meant stepping off onto the dock from the bow to fend off the very tip of her bow from the concrete. And then we let the wind do the rest of the maneuver, pushing the stern onto the dock. First things first, the doggy needed a good walk and Robbie was going to be helping out with the race course buoys. First, the course markers would need to be anchored. And then, the kids were off. With a chaotic start through the narrow canals, it was a celebration of lifelong learning and adjusting one's sails to the wind. The Sailing Club of Puerto Aventuras is one of the highest performing sailing clubs in Mexico. Here along the beautiful mangrove coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, they are growing a next generation of sailors. Salida 
The little boats make their way through the course, demonstrating their abilities to sail upwind and downwind around the buoys. Observing the regatta from above, the points of sail, like the diagram, are apparent as the kids make their way through the race course. And while optimists, lasers, and windsurfers competed, Robbie made himself useful by catching some dinner, of course. <laughs> Next morning, dark and early, we took advantage of the best weather possible for sailing out of the harbor again. I tried to continue on with instructive sailing video, but at this point, as you will see, the video takes a very fishy turn. The depth is going up. That rod is nuts. Just as I said, the rod looks funny. There you go. Luffy, luff, luff. So I'm purposefully trying to slow down the boat here, but we can indefinitely hold the boat in a stalled position. We're quite close to the shore. We need to escape the leeward shore as much as possible and make a bit of progress towards open water, which is upwind. I'm gonna try and do a release. Yep. I don't wanna marlin slash sailfish. Yeah, you, you see him back there? He just jumped. Jumping, jumping. He's taking lots of fight in him. At this point, I wouldn't even mind if he just shakes off the hooks. Come on, just jump up and shake it off, man. I agree the fight. He's still like, he's not even like close. That looks like a uh, sail, no? Marlin? Robbie is trying to lasso the fish. So this has happened to us before, catching a big, dangerous sailfish and hoping to release it, but ending up with it in the cockpit. Due to the weather circumstances, we actually couldn't release it. It was sad. I would have liked to release him. The edible? Yes, edible, yes. Do we have somebody on the island we can give him to? 
yes, we have the, the fishermen will take him. Fortunately, the local fishermen love a big fish, so we're going to give the sailfish to them. The smaller wahoo and mackerel, we're going to keep for cooking. After a big day of fishing, the two boys are now asleep. Join us next time for more sailing and fishing. Thanks for watching.